I thought that what I could best do is to offer some perspectives and initiatives that I have seen both in my personal capacity and in my capacity as the CEO of Elsevier over the last three years. And those initiatives, I hope, will be ones which are in line with the issues that were raised in the earlier session and are being raised here on this panel and are informed by those perspectives and issues from our communities as well. What I'd like to do is to see those as initiatives on which to build with ideas from this audience, from the panel, and from the earlier speakers. And I'm speaking from the standpoint, first of all, and very much more so than an hour ago, as a very proud European engineer. Throughout my career, I've had an interest in seeing growth through innovation. That's been my job in the commercial world for many, many years. And I've seen how innovation in knowledge systems can transform whole industries. I started my career in energy, and I've seen how information, digital information, has completely transformed that industry. I've seen the same in manufacturing. I've seen the same in environmental science. I've seen the same in education. And I'm beginning to see the same in research. Having worked over 20 years outside Europe, I've also seen how innovation and investment in science can transform communities, can create jobs. And it's with that perspective I am tremendously interested, personally, in how to bridge from the tremendous capability in scientific research that Europe has into the commercial and societal benefit that promises but may not always be delivered. From a company perspective, you may know that Elsevier is a European company of over a hundred years standing, and its heritage dates back to the time of Galileo. Its mission has always been to try to help to advance science, technology, and health. And today, that is still its mission. We are a commercial company, and therefore we stand both at the center of science because of the communities we serve, but also as a center for innovation because we are a company based on technology and content. And just to give a sense of scale, just in science and technology, we invest about 300 million euros to support our capabilities to help scientists, researchers, health professionals, and educators around the world. Because of that, I think we have something of a unique vantage point. And it's why we think a forum like this, which is specifically to talk about science and innovation in Europe, is one which we feel qualified to attend. We have already been offering our perspectives to policy in different areas in Europe. For example, we've been advising the UK government, showing them the way in which research competitiveness in the UK compares to research competitiveness in the rest of the world. We've done a similar study for Science Europe, bringing out perspectives, for example, around the productivity of European science compared to American science, looking at the spend in Europe compared to the spend in America, the trends, and seeing also how quickly, as somebody mentioned earlier, China is catching up and overtaking both Europe and the USA. We also talk to our communities. We talk to researchers, research executives, practicing researchers in commercial settings as well as in government-funded institutions. And I want to offer you some perspectives from that uh, experience. For example, when we talk to our academic executive advisory board, one of the things we hear about is the interest in being able to demonstrate local impact from the tax dollars spent on locally funded research. Here's one initiative that you might be interested in. In the last three years, we've been working with two state governments in the United States to help them connect researchers and research facilities 
with small and medium enterprises in the same state deliberately to demonstrate a return on the local tax dollars that fund some of that research. And we've seen interest in those initiatives elsewhere. We're working with science parks in the UK to help to bring research information more easily and more affordably to the SMEs on those science parks. We've been looking at the way in which collaboration works. We've been hearing about collaboration earlier this afternoon. Our own work on collaboration with research institutions has been extremely powerful. We've been working in Europe on text and data mining, on big data analytics, and those initiatives yield jobs. Elsevier has just opened a centre in London which will add 200 technology jobs largely dependent on the collaborations that we had entered into in universities in Europe. We've studied collaboration and the way in which research collaboration evolves over time. Somebody was mentioning that sometimes collaboration looks very local, and it's true. And yet, we can map, because of the information we have, collaboration efforts between Imperial College and Stanford, between the University of Adelaide and the University, National University of Singapore, we can see the competitive collaborative networks by discipline, by institution, and show those to those institutions. And we know that collaboration is increasing. We know that the number of authors per paper is increasing. We know there is more interdisciplinary research than ever before. But there's more that can be done. One of the things that we've been looking at is bringing better social network capabilities to those collaborations. And so we've built collaboration tools, and recently we acquired a London-based company founded by three German scientists engaged purely in helping scientists share information more effectively. We've understood from bodies like this that the connection to citizens is a priority. With this understanding, we have offered our entire research database of 10 million articles to selected journalists around the world for them to search for research information. Every year, we select 300 or so research articles that we believe have particular public relevance. We make them tailored so that they're more digestible to the public and we offer them to the entirety of journalism around the world for them to disseminate. There's more we can do. We work with Sense About Science, and you'll hear from uh, Sense About Science, I think, tomorrow, both as a donor and as a partner, helping them, for example, on the Ask for Evidence campaign. We've been hearing from our contacts in research that research is becoming increasingly data-centric. With that in mind, we have connected directly to over 20 institutional university data repositories. We make links directly from research articles, if the researcher wants it, to the underlying data. And we support any initiative to make data initiatives more open, more collaborative, introducing standards to share data more effectively than ever before. We've heard about the position of women in science. For several years, Elsevier has sponsored a Women in Science Award, especially for young women scientists around the world. And we sponsor five of these awards every single year for five women. There is more to be done. And as an organization that employs more than 50% women, it's something that's very close to our hearts. In my brief, I was asked what else can be done, and in the last couple of minutes, I will touch on two areas which I don't think perhaps we've given enough attention to yet. Education. The ability to educate our citizens at school on science is a precursor to continuing with the strength of research in Europe. The possibilities unlocked by adaptive learning, being able to bring different ways of understanding to young students in the continent will change the way in which science progresses in our communities. And the second part I'd like to talk about is technology infrastructure, the way in which we can share information on research and information on science depends to some extent on the technology infrastructure we introduce. We've heard about networks, but it's not just about networks. 
one of the principal activities that the research community will face will very soon become data management and knowledge management. The sheer volume of research data being created today without proper management will become unmanageable. This is a big challenge for this industry. And finally, picking up on a point that was made earlier, policies that encourage the creation of knowledge and the creation of jobs are absolutely fundamental to the continued success of the research and innovation ecosystem. Thank you very much.